Hey guys, and welcome back to another Rocket League Tips video. Today, I'm going to be sharing what I think is the most overlooked trick to ranking up in Rocket League 2v2. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I was playing some pretty high-ranked games uh, with another Rocket League YouTuber named Tip the other day, and I was starting to notice that every game we won, we used this one simple play that seemed to work almost every time. But before I reveal exactly what that play is here, I wanted to switch things up today, and instead of shouting out my loyal 5% of viewers that are subbed, I actually want to give a shout out today to all my Patreon members. Just last week, my private coaching sold out on Patreon for the first time ever, and the support's just been awesome lately, so I just wanted to thank you all for that. Anyways though, with all that out of the way, let's get into it and talk about my number one trick to ranking up in Rocket League 2v2. Okay, to explain this trick, I'm gonna start by putting you all in a situation that happens all the time in 2v2. All right, so the situation is, the ball's been going back and forth between teams for a while now, but for whatever reason, you just gained possession and it's a 2v1. The reason doesn't matter here, you could have won a 50, maybe the opponent just whiffed or whatever happened. Point is, your team is now in possession of the ball and importantly, there's only one defender on the opposing team. Now, when situations like this arise in game, there are a couple ways to play it. The way I see most people go from here is just to try a solo play. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with this, there's nothing that special either. The problem is, by doing this, you're basically ignoring your teammate and just treating it as a 1v1. But that isn't ideal because you have an advantage, right? It's a 2v1 and it only makes sense to try to take advantage of that somehow. So transitioning to the second way you could play this is you could go for some sort of passing play. This way, you're actually taking advantage of having a teammate rather than making your 2v1 a 1v1. The only problem with going for a passing play though is it requires a certain level of chemistry and communication with your teammate. On top of that, you have to have a certain level of mechanical skill to be accurate with your passing and shot placement, which is why this is a great strategy at the high levels but not so much for most ranks. I also know for a lot of you stuck at the lower ranks, you just aren't comfortable trusting your teammate to be there for a passing play. Overall, when it comes to passing, there are just too many moving parts and the probability that you or your teammate makes a mistake somewhere in the process is too high to make it a good option for the average player. So if going for a solo play isn't optimal, but passing isn't either, what do we do? How do we take advantage of a 2v1 situation without actually having to trust our godforsaken gold teammate? Well, there's actually a way, and it's something I like to call the clearance demo. Now, you may have seen this in my other videos, but the idea is super straightforward. Instead of trying to pass the ball back and forth and, you know, try to take advantage of the 2v1 in that way, what we're going to do instead is have one person handle the ball and the other take out the goalie. This way, you don't have to worry about errors that come from passing the ball, but you're still getting value out of both players in that 2v1 situation. Okay, but now that I've revealed the strategy, why is it actually so good? Well, to show you, I'll have some clips in the background of the strategy in action, but the real reason it's so good is because it's super straightforward and simple for the offense, but actually very, very difficult to stop for the defense. If you look at it from the point of view of the defender, not only do you have to worry about dodging the guy coming in to bump you, but you also have to worry about the actual shot that's about to come on net. So if you look at it that way, it's pretty clear why this strategy is strong. Now, another reason I like this strategy so much is because it works regardless of rank. The truth is, you don't need much mechanical skill to pull this off. And even if we just talk about the most simple version of the clearance demo, where, you know, one guy demos and the other guy just drives the ball forward, it still works a very surprisingly large amount of the time. And if you combine this demo threat with the guy on the ball actually doing some sort of dribble or flick, 
it's virtually impossible for the defender to stop. If you aren't convinced yet, take a look at this. This is a ranked game with Squishy going up against two of the best 2v2 players in the world. And pay attention to how when Squishy's teammate Taroko commits and is removed from the play, the opponents, Atomic and First Killer, instantly use this demo clearance strategy, and there's literally nothing Squishy can do to stop it. I'm gonna get demoed. I'm actually not gonna get demoed. I am gonna get demoed, never mind. Yeah. So as you can see, this strategy works at even the highest levels of play, and it's not just a cheap trick that only works on goals. But now that I've shown you some examples and you've seen it in action, let's bring things back and talk about how you can pull this off in your own games. Like I said, the reason this play is so strong is because it's simple yet powerful. Really, the only thing you have to do to be able to pull this off in your games is be able to recognize the situation and figure out what your job is in this play. So to help learn how to recognize when the demo clearance could be useful in your games, let's look at a few examples going from easy situations to recognize to a little harder ones to help learn the demo clearance. All right, example number one is pretty straightforward and it starts with me dribbling the ball on my side of the field. This guy in the opposing team makes the mistake of challenging too early, and so I flick the ball over him. After this happens, it's clearly a 2v1 situation, and since I'm on the ball, Tip is the one to go in for the clearance demo. Now, even though he doesn't get it, you can see the power of the strategy because just the threat of the demo forces the goalie into a super weird spot and I'm able to put it around him. Okay, that play was simple enough, so let's take a look at another example. All right, here in situation number two, the play starts when Tip flicks the ball over the first man. Unlike the first situation though, after Tip flicks the ball, we actually swap roles because he's the one that's closer to the goalie and I'm in a better situation to score this ball. So Tip and I switch roles and he successfully hits the goalie, which gives me enough time to place a nice shot in the bottom corner for the goal. On to example number three, let's take a look at a situation that is a little less straightforward. In this play, the situation shifts when my teammate Alex beats this guy named Adub to the ball. And while it may not appear like it at first, by the time this ball gets closer to their net, the orange team is actually only going to have one defender, which means this is another classic 2v1 situation. So since Alex is closer to the ball, I follow the goalie and track him down for a demo and a free goal. Okay, on to example number four, and this is where you can see how powerful this mechanic really is. In this example, the 2v1 starts not when we're on offense, but actually in our own corner. When this guy Juicy misses the ball, Tip instantly calls out we're in a 2v1. So I take the ball up the field and watch how quickly Tip chases down the goalie, eventually leading to a demo and a wide open net for me. Okay, now for our final example, I'm showing you this clip because I really want to teach you to expand what you consider to be a 2v1 situation. In this situation, I go for a kickoff and win it hard into the opposing corner. But wait, realize once I win this kickoff, my teammate Tip and I actually have a temporary 2v1 advantage. In your games, you might not think about this. You might just chase the ball down and try to go for a solo play yourself. But remember, even though this doesn't look like it, it's actually a 2v1 situation. So that means we should always be considering the idea of a demo clearance, which is why when I see this ball coming right back center, I decide to go for the bump, which forces the goalie to pre-jump, miss the ball, and tip finishes it off for another 2v1 conversion. Now, I could go on and on with examples of this, but I imagine by this point, you're starting to get the idea. Really, the only hard part with this trick is identifying the situation. But if you can do that and have that awareness of where all the other players in the lobby are around you, the demo clearance can be one of the highest success rate strategies to convert 2v1s into goals in Rocket League. All right, all that being said, I want to remind you this isn't the only way to score. And while it is really strong, it's still situational. So rather than using this as the only way you attack, try to mix it into your current play style that way the defense will never know what's coming. Okay, so now that I've talked a lot about how to pull the strategy off when you're on offense, I think it's worthwhile to talk a little bit about how to stop it 
if you're ever on defense. Now, the truth is, I think the best way to stop the strategy is to not let it happen in the first place, right? It all starts with the first man losing a 50 or for whatever reason being removed from the play, leaving the last guy in the 2v1. But I know you can't always avoid being stuck in the 2v1, so if you do get stuck in this situation, how do we defend it? Well, there's no perfect way to defend the strategy, and that's just another reason why it's so effective. But if we really do want to learn how to combat the strategy, I think we should go back and look at that squishy 2v2 game I was talking about earlier. If you look here, we're now watching another situation where Squishy gets stuck as the last man on defense. So once Squishy realizes he's in a 2v1 situation, he has to make some changes quick because if he just plays like normal, he will get demoed. So what Squishy does is instead of driving back to his net, he cuts to the corner, moving a little bit away from the ball, which you can see Atomic doesn't expect, and so Squishy is able to rotate back around and save this ball. Now, this is just one example, and there are many, many ways to dodge the demo. But remember, no matter what you do to dodge, you still have to be in a situation to save the shot. This is why I recommend bobbing and weaving back and forth to dodge a demo rather than jumping, because jumping eliminates your options and can actually end up making the shot unsavable. So moral of the story is, if you can avoid being on defense in a 2v1 situation, that's your best bet. But if you are stuck in the situation, try to bob and weave, use the walls maybe, and only jump as a last resort to try to save the ball. All right, guys, that is about all I have to say on demo clearances, which hopefully you now agree are one of the most underrated yet effective offensive strategies in all of Rocket League. Especially at the lower ranks, everyone is so focused on just hitting the ball that so many people don't actually stop to consider other options. So if you can incorporate this strategy in your games, I think you'll have an edge on your opponents regardless of your rank. All right, guys, thank you so much for sticking around to this point. But before the video ends, if you're new to the channel and don't know about the monthly giveaway I do, then this is the part of the video where I'll talk more about that. Basically, at the end of every month, I pick a random subscriber to win two months worth of free private coaching from me. Now, normally I only coach my Patreon members, but if you get picked, I'll coach you for four sessions over a span of two months, completely free of charge. So if you wanna enter for a chance to win that, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and join my Discord linked in the description below, because I picked the winner over there. I also run tons of other giveaways on my Discord, and it's an awesome place to find people to play with, get help from other people, and just overall support the channel. So make sure to check it out if any of that sounds interesting. Anyways though guys, that's all I've got, so thank you all so much again for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.